And so in 2010, George Roberts of, of KKR, who's become a great friend of mine, approached me and said, listen, you need to get out of there. You need to start your own business. You need to start all over again. Okay? He said, you, you don't have any equity in the capital dynamics, Silicon Valley Bank, you're done with that. And I said, George, I need a job and I need something to do. And he said, well, okay, come work in KKR, at KKR. So come work at KKR meant we got a building over here on the side that's got a small uh, table in there that you can use as a desk. Come in here and figure it out. So I went to work with George. I went to work in George's office, um, in, in, which is actually in, in, in Tim's building. Um, we have, you know, they, it's called KKR Capstone. And I went there in October of uh, 2010. And in April of 2011, I went back to George and I said, here's, the, here's what I want to do. I go, I've always loved, I like the fund of funds business, okay? But the fund of funds is a boring business, right? It's just, you know, you, you get into Draper, you know what, they send a capital call, you pay the capital call. Tim goes out and spends the money and he calls you back and you send more money in and he goes out and spends it. And you spend, and then he starts making money, he sends it back to you. So it's kind of a boring business. But the, the thing I always love to do is I always love to do what they call co-invest or direct invest. So I would walk into a company like a data domain or like a Google when there were 20 employees and I'd go, hey, listen, I think I can help you drive sales. I think I can help you recruit. I think I can take you, your, your, your sales team, uh, you know, I can, to a football game and they'd always say hey that's great why don't you do that and so I'd do that and they'd come back and they go hey you know what we're raising a series B and you know what uh, Kleiner Perkins is going to lead the round and Greylock's going to participate and you know we'd love to put have you put a million bucks in and I'd always go well how about 25,000 right because I didn't have a million dollars to put into these deals and so I, I was able to, 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 to go into companies like Data Domain and like Google with just a little bit amount of money and a lot of other ones that didn't do crap, but just really enjoy watching these companies grow and how they built and ups and downs. And what it really reminded me of was really football. It's the same as a football game. You see, you, you put together a team, they're from different backgrounds, from different religions, different countries. You know, everybody tries to win the Super Bowl. And that, that was my thrill. So I went back to George and said, listen, I, I can't do a fund of funds because I have a non-compete, right? And I know they're not, they're not, uh, honored here in California, but these guys are so litigious and my name had been beaten up in the media so much, I didn't want any more media attention. I said, I want to start a kind of co-invest fund uh, or a direct invest fund. And George looked at me and said, listen, you can't, in order for you to raise $600 million and charge 2% management fee and a 10% carry, that'll, that'll kick off about $1.2 million in fees. That's about what you need to live on. He goes, there's no way you can raise $600 million. I mean, nobody's going to put that type of money in with a one, one guy that doesn't know anything about technology and is all he's going to do is rely on his relationships to get in. So he said, the, here's the idea that you need to do. You need to go in, here in the valley, okay, to, back to all your friends, and you've got to find 30 people, okay, 30 guys that, a couple things, can help you with deal flow. Uh, number two, help you build a new business. Um, number three, really good guys. And number four, most importantly, guys that are willing to give you a second chance. And you go to those 30 guys and you sell them 40% of your business for $150,000 each. And each one of those 30 guys will put $150,000 into your management company. So you waste four and a half million dollars. I'll give you rent here in my office for free. You don't hire a bunch of people, use that four and a half million dollars to run your business. But also, each one of those 30 guys will also put a one million dollar commitment into a co-invest fund that you'll go out and manage, okay? And, and so he said, I'll do the first unit. He said, I'll do the 150 and I'll do the million, okay? And he said, you know what? And you know what, Henry Kravis, my partner, he'll do it too. And you know what, then Jerry Yang, I haven't called him yet, but I think he'll do it. And you know what, now go find Jim Breyer from Excel, go see Bruce Dunleavy from Benchmark, you know, go back to New York and visit the guys from Fortress and find a bunch of guys like that that you, know, you can launch a product with. And so what I, that's what I did. I went back and I found 30 guys, 
like George, like Henry Kravis, like Jim Breyer, like Jeff Yang from Red Point, like John Wilechka, like Anil Bouchery from Greylock, all guys that are just, you know, kind of big names in the industry, guys that are good guys, guys that can, that would be able to help me with deal flow, guys that were, you know, willing to give me a second chance. And, and I launched that business in, uh, in uh, 2011. And that's, that's what I did. Um, and it's been wildly successful because what happens now is one of your companies gets funded by Kleiner Perkins, right? You do a Series A with Kleiner Perkins. Series B comes in and I come to you and I say, listen, you know, you should take $20 million from Kleiner Perkins, but you should take $500,000 from my group of investors, George Roberts, Henry Kravis, Jeff Yang, John Walechka, because these guys can help you move up the food chain. And then I went back to all the venture guys that matter, guys like Tim, and I said, hey, Tim, listen, if you ever get a good idea, you know what, it doesn't have to be a 20X. Henry Kravis doesn't need 20X. He just wants me to stay in business. Uh, so if it's really, really risky, don't even show it to me. And so, you know, that kind of helps me deal with adverse selection. So I've been able to invest in companies like Palo Alto Networks, which just went public. I was a large investor in Workday, which is based in Pleasanton. Um, a large investor in a company called Cloudera, which is, which is here. I'm a large investor in a company called Pure Storage. I'm able to, I was able to get into Andy Bechtelstein's new, new company called Nebula Networks. And what I do every day is I go into these companies. I just met with a company uh, called CoRaid, right? And CoRaid, they, they, they do about $40 million in sales. Well, they need help. The sales team needs help. Well, listen, I'll tell you what. I got a box at the San Francisco Giant game for all your sales guys and all your leads. Let's go watch the San Francisco Giants play on July 19th. Well, the head of sales loves that. And he picks up the phone. He calls the board of directors and says, hey, this guy's a great co-investor. He's a great guy to have on our team. You know what, the next time around, let him put more money into the deal. So that's kind of the business model. Uh, I was also able to kind of come back when my non-compete expired and put together a fund of funds, which some of Tim's, invest, uh, some of Tim's partners are investors in. The same model, the same you know, 14 firms, but this time I'm not doing a fee aggregation model where what most fund of funds are. I'm, just, I'm basically giving the fund of funds away for deal flow uh, so I can look into these guys' portfolios to find great deals to do co-investing. And kind of really, the, you know, that's what the business is. This is an exciting time here in the Valley. Uh, I know all of you guys have reached into your pockets to come. But let me tell you what, this is really cool stuff. Uh, what's happening here in the Valley, again, especially on the enterprise side, uh, is reminiscent of what was going on in 1998 and 99 here in the Valley, and it's a, it's a whole new wave.